And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, I'm Tom Vassell, and today we're taking a look at a small game called Circle the Wagons. Now this is a little game here, it's called a wallet-sized game, and this company that makes these button shy games makes a whole pile of them. I don't know that I've played more than a couple of them, actually. Uh, I'm not even sure what really prompted me to play this one. I normally look for games a little bigger, I suppose, but I was going on a trip recently, and it's this two-player game. I figured, hey, me and my wife are traveling together, maybe we'll have a chance to play it. Well, a chance to play it is an understatement. This got played quite a bit. Does that mean it's good? Well, not necessarily. Let's take a look. So there are 18 cards in the game, and each time you play, you're going to take three cards randomly and flip them over, and they're going to have a bonus scoring in the middle. So there's three different bonus scorings. The other 15 cards are placed around the table. One person is going first. The other person will pick a card, and that person will start with that card going clockwise. On your turn, you take the card. So if it was my turn, I would take this card and add it to a tableau in front of me. Or I can skip it and maybe I say, I want this card. That's fine, but if I do that, I must give these three cards to my opponent who must take them. They can't refuse them. And then it would be their turn, and maybe they want this card, then I want this one. Then they'll skip that one and take this, which gives this one to me. Then I take this one, giving that to them. They take this one, I take this one. They take this, giving both of these to me. Then everyone is going to score. As players take cards, the first card you just put in front of you, after that, you must put them either next to each other, or you can cover up squares and do things like this. So as you put the cards together, you're placing them like that. You can't put them diagonally. They have to go on top of each other. So let's say, for example, this is my scoring here. This is my final town, how it looks. Each of these squares is considered a territory. And I'm looking for groups of territories of each of the types. So there's six different types. So I'll take a look, for example, at the desert type here. My biggest group is four, so that gives me four points. Then I take a look at the forest. Well, I only have one, one, and one, so that's one point for forest. Snow, one, 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 so one point for snow. Mountains, I have a group of two, so that gives me two points. Plains, a one and a one, so one point for plains. And water, well, only one for water. So I didn't do a very good job of getting groups together with the exception of desert got a nice big group together there. You'll then look at each of the scoring cards. So here I get two points per cow in my largest cow group. Woo, that's two points. I obviously built this one randomly. Here we get seven points if I had a corner of four corner to corner forts. I did not get that so no points there. And then three points for each wagon adjacent to my largest water group. Well that's good. My largest water group here would be one. So I got three wagons next to that, so each of those is going to give me three points, so I get a bonus of nine. Players will just then add their bonuses together, and whoever has the most points is the winner. So again, it's a game with 18 cards, very easy to tell apart the different background terrains and the different symbols on them. The different, all the different scoring things, this is where the game's really going to be different and have unusual things. I found them all clear, I didn't need to look up any of them and figure out how they worked. And then all the cards simply will fit in this wallet case here. You can. Stick them all on one side if you want, or put them all on the other side. The rules themselves are a small little four-page rule thing like this. And then you can take that. I put the cards in one side and put the rules in the other side. Very, very simple and can easily fit in your shirt pocket. All right, so that's Circle the Wagons. What a fun little game. I'm very impressed with this one. There's the whole tableau building or building kind of your own area out with the cars. That's quick and simple, but the three different scoring methods is going to make it different every time. Not to mention the three cards that are put out there for scoring have different things on the backs of them, so you're never quite sure. Like, for example, there's a, a card in here I think that has, I think, three beer bottles on it, and that's a great card to have out for some of the different special abilities. Yeah, here's one with three beer bottles out there, and that, that could 
could be great because there's one, for example, gives you points if you put a gun and beer bottles in a row. So you really want this card. But that card may be flipped over and you're using the scoring on that card, which then changes how the game plays. So you have to figure out, obviously you want to make big groups, but you also want to follow the scoring cards. One of the scoring cards actually gives you points if your town is smaller than your opponent's. You get points equal to the difference. So the game's concept of pick a card, but skip as many as you want, but then you give those to your opponent is a really odd double-edged sword. So it might sound good. You're like, hey, I'll, I'll skip two cards, skip two to my opponent, but I really want this card. At the same time, my opponent might not even want those cards. Now, of course, they could cover up a big chunks of those cards if they want to. And it's kind of, the game's really fast. We're talking like 10 minutes at the most, maybe a little shorter than that, depending on how, how much analysis paralysis one person has as they build out the different areas there. But overall, I was very impressed with this. I might have to try out some more of these button-shy little games um, if they're this quick and simple and fun and inexpensive. So there's a lot of positives to this Circle the Wagons. But as a two-player game when you're traveling, I like this one. Now, it's a little too big, I think, to use, let's say, on an airplane. Uh, we played this at an airport, but not an airplane, because you have the, your tray, and you need to circle cars, and you each need your own tableau, so unless you have an empty middle seat, um, and that's an amazing day anyway. But other than that, you, just, you need a, a good-sized table space to play it, but easy to carry. Check it out. Circle the wagons. Dice Tower Judgment approved!